Hi, I'm AJ Mickle with ANL Canada Laboratories. Today, we are going to be discussing soil sampling methods and best practices. There are many reasons why you may be collecting a soil sample, so before you head out to the field, ask yourself some of these important questions. What is the purpose of the samples? The ideal soil sampling method and timing will be determined by the purpose of the sampling event and the analysis required. It may also affect the amount of soil you need to collect and how you should handle the sample prior to shipment or delivery to the lab. Are you trying to create or modify a fertility plan? Your results can be used reliably for up to three years when managing crop inputs, so make sure you keep your fertility samples up to date. Are you trying to validate past management and fertility practices? As a landowner or renter, it may be important to maintain a good sampling agreement or program with growers to ensure your investment is maintained and the soil isn't mined. Are you trying to determine land suitability for a specific crop? I once heard a consultant admit the most difficult recommendation to a grower with a new piece of land was for him not to plant his intended crop of potatoes. Are you looking to test for soil contaminants like heavy metals or pesticides? Or are you trying to satisfy a 4R or nutrient management plan? Perhaps you require some sort of biological testing like soil health, nematodes, or soil-borne disease. How you answer these questions will determine the best sampling method for your operation. Another important thing to consider before sample collection is the timing. Have there been any recent applications of inputs, manure, fertilizer? If there have been, you may want to wait around a month before pulling a sample. Is the soil overly dry or wet, maybe even frozen? In the freeze of winter and the heat of summer, some soils turn almost to concrete, making it virtually impossible to take a sample to depth without a hydraulic sampler on an ATV or truck. Sample depth is an absolutely critical yet often overlooked part of collection, and we will touch on this further. Has the field been worked? If so, it may be very rough to drive on and your equipment may take a beating. It may also be difficult to collect a sample to proper depth. In this case, you may want to wait for more favorable conditions to collect your samples. When it comes to sampling equipment, you will need a sample probe. A shovel can be used but is not recommended. There are many soil probes available on the market and a and carries a few models in stock. We also carry replaceable tips for different soil types. You'll need a clean plastic pail. Avoid a metal pail as trace amounts of metal and rust can contaminate your sample. You'll need sample bags or Ziplocs. You can pick up soil bags from a and or have a box shipped to your location if you need a large volume. A Ziploc works just fine though. You'll need a pen or permanent marker or even bag labels if you printed your submission from the data web. It's also a good idea to carry a screwdriver with you as it can help remove soil that gets stuck in your probe. Certain soil types, especially muck soils, can be difficult to remove. Depending on the type of sampling you require, but really in all instances, it is recommended to geo-reference your sample. Knowing where a sample came from is an important part of farm record keeping. It can also be imported into multiple software platforms and allows you to spatially correlate soil properties to plant tissue analysis, in-season plant biomass via drone or satellite, final crop quality and yield, as well as many other factors. We won't dive too far into the different software and GPS units available, but it's important to mention that there are plenty of choices for your operation. If you don't have a GPS field computer or sampling software, you can use a low-tech approach to geo-referencing your sample location by using Google Earth. If you use Google Earth on your PC, you can create points and regions and navigate to those locations in-field on your phone or tablet. The types of sampling we're going to discuss today are bulk composite testing, zone sampling, and site-specific grid type sampling. Bulk composite sampling is a good way to satisfy a nutrient management plan, 4Rs, or to get a very general idea for soil levels. It can be used for nematode type sampling, heavy metals, and pesticide residues. It's not recommended for a fertility program. In bulk sampling, the field is split into sections, typically no more than 25 acres. 10 to 15 soil cores are taken within each region, and results give averages within those regions. The pros of bulk sampling are that it's the simplest and least costly sampling method. It's low tech, so you don't need expensive GPS equipment. The cons of bulk sampling are that it doesn't capture field variability, and thus, problem areas may not be identified as results are an average. This is the reason we do not recommend bulk sampling for a soil fertility program. Zone sampling. In zone sampling, the field is split into sections based on some sort of background information. This could be farmer knowledge, topography, yield, aerial imagery, or in-season NDVI from satellite. In zone sampling, 10 to 15 cores are taken from within each region. 
Similar to bulk sampling, results give soil average levels within those regions. Regions can vary substantially in size from one acre up to 25 acres. Some of the pros of zone sampling are that it can be one of the best sampling methods for targeting different production areas. It can capture significant in-field variability and be used for variable rate application of inputs. Cons of zone sampling are that it takes a good knowledge of the field or some sort of background data layer to create good zones. Poor zone creation can lead to poor representation of field variability, so be careful when choosing a zone sampling program. Site-specific and grid sampling. Site-specific sampling is usually the best method for creating a good fertility program, especially when sampling a farm for the first time or without any sort of background knowledge or historical data on the field. Site-specific sampling is typically done on a sample per one acre, two and a half acre, or five acre frequency. In some cases of high value crops, it can be done on a half acre basis. The sampler uses a grid from sampling software, along with topography and soil type changes to select their locations. At each selected sampling point, 10 to 15 soil cores are taken from the immediate area, about a five to 10 meter radius. The pros of site-specific sampling are it's great at capturing field variability and does not require any previous knowledge or data layers of the field. Data can be imported into various software platforms such as ANL's TerraSite to run advanced analysis and correlate yield to soil test levels. Site-specific sampling can be used for variable rate applications. The results represent real values at a given location compared to the averages reported with zones or bulk sampling. In this way, data can be used to identify production areas and move toward a zone sampling program. Data points can be tracked over time and monitor your fertility. The cons of site-specific sampling are that it really requires a GPS field computer and software to do a proper collection. Once you've decided what sampling method is best suited for your desired outcome, it's time to hit the field. Now don't forget your sample probe, your clean plastic pail, sample bags, a permanent marker or labels, GPS field computer if required, and your trusty screwdriver. For the most part, the physical collection of a soil sample is the same for all sampling methods. One of the most important things to bear in mind when collecting a soil sample is the depth. The sample depth is a critically important, yet often overlooked part of the sampling process. Soil nutrient ranges and recommendations are calibrated to specific depth. For standard soil fertility analysis, soil health testing, biological analysis, or contamination such as pesticide and heavy metals, the sample should be collected at a depth of zero to six inches. There is an exception to this rule for fertility analysis. Some soils have a very shallow topsoil layer, four to five inches, and you can see a clear, distinct change in soil type at this layer. In this case, you should discard the subsoil and collect only the topsoil layer. For pre-plant or pre-side dress nitrate testing, the sample should be collected at a zero to 12 inch depth or even zero to 24 inches. You may require an auger type sample probe to get down to these depths if sampling by hand. In many areas, particularly Western Canada, samples are pulled at multiple depths for nutrient analysis. Try to avoid collecting stones or excessive plant material as part of your sample. If sampling post cereal harvest, try to kick the stubble out of the way prior to probing the ground. If sampling into a cover crop, try to remove as much plant material as possible before bagging your sample. Avoid probing in furrow as to avoid hitting a band of fertilizer. As we have mentioned, carry your trusty screwdriver with you, as in some cases, muck soils for instance, it can be difficult to remove the soil core from your probe. You can also lubricate your sample probe with something like WD-40 to allow for easier removal of the soil from your probe. For most of your standard testing, collect 10 to 15 soil cores and mix thoroughly in your bucket. If you require additional analysis like soil health, textures, or some sort of biological testing, you may want to collect two full bags of soil, so 20 to 30 cores. Once you've collected your sample, label your sample bag with a permanent marker or bag label if you've printed these off the data web. Fill the bag up to the line, or in the case of a Ziploc, fill a sandwich style bag and squeeze the air from it. In the case where you require multiple analysis, collect two bags worth of soil. Complete your submission paperwork. You can print it off the ANL Canada website under Quick Links. There are different options depending on your region and the test packages will vary. Ensure to fill out your account number if you have one. If you don't have an account, please fill out the entire submitted by section with your name, email, telephone number, and mailing address. Make sure your submission is legible and that your sample ID matches what you have labeled on your bag. Fill out the sample depth if applicable, as well as the analysis packages or additional analysis required. 
If your submission contains biological analysis for soil health, nematodes, or disease, it's important to make sure you don't let your soil dry out. Keep it moist and cool prior to shipment or delivery. You may want to package in a cooler, which can be returned to you. If you're shipping the samples to us via courier, be sure to include your paperwork submission in the package with the samples. Please try to keep packages under 30 pounds as larger packages are often damaged in shipping. You may want to place your paper submission in a Ziploc bag to ensure it doesn't take on moisture and become illegible. If you have questions regarding the submission or shipping process, please call the lab and someone will be able to advise you. Once the samples arrive at the lab, the turnaround time will depend on the analysis you have requested. Standard soil fertility tests and nitrates are typically ready in three business days. Pesticides and heavy metals, five to seven days. Soil health and soybean cyst nematode in seven days a full nematode scan in 10 days, and soil disease in three to five days. It is important to note, if you're unable to collect your own samples, a &L has partnered with Deveron UAS for soil collection across North America. Call us today and see if there are boots on the ground in your area. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. If you have any questions regarding the sampling process, shipment of samples, analysis costs, or interpretation of results, we have staff on hand that can assist you.